The story you're about to hear is the first written epic. For 4,000 years, it lay buried in the sands of a rock. This is the story of the Sumerian goddess of love and fertility, Inanna. Of the beginning and of her queenship, her courtship and her descent into the underworld. days, in the first nights, the very first nights, in the first years, in the first years when everything needed was brought into being, when everything needed was properly nourished, when bread baked in the shrines of the land, and bread was tasted in the homes of the land. When heaven moved away from earth, and earth separated from heaven, and the name of man was fixed. I think the Sumerians knew things we don't know. If you look at their statues with their eyes wide open, they had a special vision. And in telling the story, it's helping to give some of that vision to us who need it desperately. We need to be in the spiritual world if we're going to continue to be in the world at all. So that's part of what I hope in, is happening in, in the telling of Inanna and bringing the Sumerians, Sumerian culture closer to people. It's giving their very sophisticated spiritual vision of the world to us, to enrich our dreams, our images, our thoughts. It's to raise our level and to broaden it. Inanna is a story, it's a vertical story. Some stories are horizontal, but it's, it's really vertical. It goes deep down and it goes high up. I mean, it finishes, you know, in the underworld, and then the hymns are necessary because, you know, it's, it's the ascent once again. Hundreds of statues of the goddess, of the naked female figure, have been excavated from the ancient Near East. But who is she? Without her text, we can only guess. The first long text of the goddess is that of Inanna. We know her story today, not only because the Sumerians chose to write on clay tablets, but because of the work of the archaeologists who found the tablets and the Sumerologists who deciphered and pieced them together. Inanna's text tells us of the adventures of the great goddess who brought her people back a gift. Inanna set out by herself. And Inanna was within a short distance of Eridu. He, whose ears are wide open, 
He who knows the may, the blessings. Ooh. He who knows the secrets of the gods. He who knows all things, Enki, the god of wisdom, called to his servant, Izimud, and said, Izimud, the young woman is about to enter the holy shrine. When she does, give her butter cake to eat. Pour cold water to refresh her heart. Offer her beer. Treat her like an equal. Easy mood. He did Enki's words. He poured beer for Anana. He poured beer for Enki. He poured more beer for Anana. He poured more beer for Enki. And Anna and Enki drank beer. They drank more and more and more beer. They toasted each other. They challenged each other. Enki raised his cup a second time and said, in the name of my power, in the name of my holy shrine, I give to my daughter Anana truth, descent into the underworld, ascent from the underworld, the art of love making. I take them, said Anana. Enki raised his cup a third time and said, in the name of my power, in the name of my holy shrine, I give to my daughter Anana the art of the hero, the perceptive ear, the making of decisions. I take them, said Anana. Enki gave his daughter the maid and Anana took them. To me, the May are the blessings. It's what it is to be civilized, and it encompasses everything, it, from the art of lovemaking, to truth, descent into the underworld, ascent from the underworld. I mean, when I say them, and, and how it is in spiritual life is when you say the words, it is, it comes to you, and they're so powerful, the saying of them. We have no one word in English for May. Some of the possible translations are laws of the universe, attributes of civilization, or the blessings. They have a great range. In this story, in which Inanna brings the May to her people and assumes her queenship, the Sumerians list the May four times, and there's 156 of them. What I've learned in the telling of the May is that they're qualities of life, qualities of being. You have to understand it's ritual. It's sacred ritual. When you, when you recite the, the fullness of these qualities, they come inside you. They empower you. Enki gave his daughter the May, and Anana took them. Then Anana stood before her father Enki and said, My father gave me the May. He gave me all the blessings. He gave me the high priesthood. He gave me godship. He gave me the noble, enduring crown. He gave me the scepter. He gave me the staff. He gave me the holy, measuring rod and line. He gave me truth. He gave me descent into the underworld. Gave me a scent from the underworld. He gave me the dark garment. He gave me the colorful garment. He gave me the art of love making. He gave me the art of song. He gave me the art of the elder. He gave me the art of power. He gave me the plundering of cities. He gave me the setting up of lamentations. He 
gave me the rejoicing of the heart. He gave me kindness, travel, the secure dwelling place. He gave me the art of the scribe, the art of the builder, the perceptive ear, the power of attention. He gave me procreation, the assembled family, strife, counsel, heart soothing. He gave me the making of decisions. At the white dock, the May were being unloaded, and as they were unloaded, they were announced and presented to the people of Uruk. And then, more May appeared. More May than Enki had given to Inanna. And these two were announced and presented to the people of Uruk. Inanna brought the art of the woman. Inanna brought a lure. Inanna brought the placing of the garment on the ground. Inanna brought the tambourine. Inanna brought the drums. Inanna brought the perfect execution of the May. Then Enki spoke to Inanna and said, Let the May which you have brought to your city remain in the holy shrine of your city. Let your people prosper. Let your children rejoice. Let Uruk take again its great place. Inanna took the May from the God of Wisdom, and the Sumerians revered and feared her because of her powers to bring order or destruction to the land. She was the great goddess. She was the morning and evening star who could turn the heavens from darkness into light. She was the goddess of fertility, the great goddess of love, love in all its aspects, playful, passionate, raging, tender, supportive, What shall I do? Her mother said, Open the door, my lady. Open the door. Inanna, at her mother's command, bathed and anointed herself with scented oil. She tied her lapis beads around her neck, put on her royal white robe, slipped her ring over her wrist, and prepared herself. Dumizi waited expectantly. Inanna opened the door. Inside the house, she shone before him like the light of the moon. Dumasi gazed at her joyously, pressed his neck close against hers. He kissed her. What I tell you, let the singer weave into song. Let it flow from ear to mouth. Let it pass from old to young. My vulva, the horn, the boat of heaven is full of eagerness like the young moon, my untilled land lies fallow. As for me and honor, who will plow my vulva? Who will plow my high field? Who will plow my wet ground? As for me, the young woman, who will station the ox there? Who will plow my vulva? Then Dumasi said, I, Dumasi the king, 
will plow your vulva. Great lady, I will plow your vulva. Then plow my vulva, man of my heart, plow my vulva. At the king's lap, the rising cedar grew. Plants grew high by their side, grains grew high by their side, gardens flourished luxuriantly. And Anna sang, he has sprouted, he has burgeoned, he is lettuce growing by the waters, he is the one my womb loves best, my honey man, my honey man, his hand is honey, his foot is honey, he is the one my womb loves best. He has sprouted, he has burgeoned, he is lettuce growing by the waters. He is the one my womb loves best. Oh lady, your breast is your field. In Anna, your breast is your field. Your broad field pours out plants. Your broad field pours out grain. Pour for me in Anna. Pour for me in Anna. I will drink all you offer. He is the one my womb loves best. She called for it. She called for the bed which rejoices the heart. She called for the bed which sweetens the loins. She called for the bed of kingship. She called for the bed of queenship. And Anna spread the bridal sheet across the bed. She said, my king, the bed is ready. My bridegroom, the bed is waiting. My beloved, the delight of my eyes, you met me. We rejoiced together. You took your pleasure of me. You led me into your house. You laid me down on your fragrant honey bed, tongue playing 50 times you did so. Now my sweet love is sated. Now you say, set me free in honor. You will be a little daughter to my father. I would go to the palace. Set me free. Oh, Dumasy, your allure was sweet. I blossom bare on the apple orchard. I bear a fruit in the apple orchard. Your allure was sweet. Oh, Dumasy. My fearless one, my shining one, how sweet was your allure. The mystical Jews accept they have this wonderful story, which is that one time they tried to get rid of the evil impulse in the world. And when the rabbis tried to get rid of the evil impulse in the world, the chickens wouldn't lay eggs. You can't get rid of it. You can't deny it. You can't s suppress it. I mean, we, we all know this. But the Sumerians weren't getting rid of it. They were simply saying, it's all here. Treachery, 
straightforwardness, deceit, kindness. It's all in our universe. Inanna is here, Erish Kigal is here too. And the end of Inanna, which, which to me is just so very strong, is Inanna finishes, her whole story finishes by saying, Holy Erish Kigal, great is your name. Holy Erish Kigal, we sing your praises. And Erish Kigal is the other dark side of Inanna, the all white. She's the grasping, witchy, bitchy, lusty, nasty, horrendous, frustrated, miserable woman who has nothing, who's hungry and thirsty and moaning and groaning and sighing and trying to give birth and come into herself. And it was, it's only when Inanna meets Erish Kigal that Inanna is able to be reborn. From the great above, she opened her ear to the great below. From the great above, the goddess opened her ear to the great below. From the great above, Inanna opened her ear to the great below. She abandoned heaven and earth to descend to the underworld. She abandoned her office of holy priestess of heaven. She abandoned her seven temples and her seven cities to descend to the underworld. She gathered together the May. With the May in her possession, she prepared herself she placed the crown of the step on her head, tied her lapis beads around her neck, let her double strand of beads fall to her breast, wrapped herself in her royal white robe, dowed her eyes with the ointment called, let him come, let him come, bound her breastplate called, Come, man, come, around her chest, slipped her gold ring over her wrist, and took her measuring rod and line in her hand. Inanna set out for the underworld. Neen Schuber, her constant support, went with her. Inanna turned to her and said, Neen Schuber, I am setting out now for the underworld. If I do not return, set up a lament for me by the ruins. Beat the drum in the assembly shrines. Dress yourself in a single garment like a beggar. Go to Nippur. If Father Enlil will not help, go to Ur. If Father Nana will not help, go to Eridu. Father Enki is the god of wisdom. He knows the secrets. Surely he will not let me die. Nin Schuber, do not forget what I have commanded you. Now go. When Inanna came to the outer gates of the underworld, she knocked boldly and called in a fierce voice. Open the door, gatekeeper. Open the door, Nettie. I alone would enter. Nettie, the chief gatekeeper of the underworld, said, Who are you? I am Anon, a queen of heaven on my way to the east. If you are truly Inanna, Queen of heaven on your way to the east. Why has your heart led you on the road from which no traveler returns? Because 
of my sister, Erish Kegal. Her husband has died. I have come to witness the funeral rites. Wait here, Inanna. I will speak with my queen. Neti, enter the throne room of Erish Kegal, the queen of the underworld. He said, my queen, a young woman, as tall as heaven, as wide as the earth, as strong as the foundations of the city walls, waits outside the palace gates. She has gathered together the men. Erish Kigal heard this. She took the matter into her heart and dwelt on it. Then she said, come, Nettie, heed my words. Bolt the seven gates of the underworld, and one by one, open each gate a crack. Let Anana enter as she enters. Remove her royal garments. Let the holy priestess of heaven enter, bowed low. Neti heeded her words. He bolted the seven gates. Then he opened the outer gate and said, Come, Inanna. Enter. And Anana entered the first gate. The crown of the step was removed from her head. Anana said, What is this? Quiet, Anana. The ways of the underworld are perfect. They may not be questioned. When Anana entered the second gate, her lapis beads were removed from her neck. What is this? Quiet, Anana. The ways of the underworld are perfect. They may not be questioned. When Anana entered the third gate, her double strand of beads was removed from her breast. What is this? Quiet, Anana. The ways of the underworld are perfect. They may not be questioned. Anana entered the fourth gate. Her breastplate called, come man, come, was removed from her chest. What is this? Quiet, Anana. The ways of the underworld are perfect. They may not be questioned. When Anana entered the fifth gate, her gold ring was removed from her wrist. What is this? Quiet, Anana. The ways of the underworld are perfect. They may not be questioned. When Anana entered the sixth gate, her measuring rod and line was removed from her hand. What is this? Quiet, Anana. The ways of the underworld are perfect. They may not be questioned. When Anana entered the seventh gate, her royal white robe was removed from her body. What is this? Quiet, Inanna. The ways of the underworld are perfect. They may not be questioned. Naked and bowed low, Inanna entered the throne room. Erish Kigal rose from her throne. Inanna started toward the throne when the judges of the underworld surrounded her, passing judgment against her. Then Erish Kigal fastened on Inanna the eye of death. She spoke against her the word of wrath. She uttered against her the cry of guilt. She struck her. Anana was turned into a corpse, a piece of rotting meat, and hung on the hook on the wall. And after three days and three nights, 
and Anna did not return, Ein Schuber set up a lament for her by the ruins. She beat the drum in the assembly shrines. She dressed herself in a single garment like a beggar. Alone, she went to Nippur. When she entered the house of the air god, she fell on her knees and cried, O oh, Father Enlil, do not let your daughter be put to death in the underworld. Do not let your bright silver be covered with the dust of the underworld. Father Enlil said, My daughter craved the great above. Inanna craved the great below. She who receives the may of the underworld does not return. In Schuber went to Ur. When she entered the house of the moon god, she fell on her knees and cried, Father Nana, do not let your daughter be put to death in the underworld. Do not let your precious lapis be broken into stone for the stone worker. Father Nana said, My daughter craved the great above, and Anna craved the great below. She who goes to the dark city stays there. Mean Schuber went to Eridu. When she entered the house of the god of wisdom, she fell on her knees and cried, Father Enki, do not let your daughter be put to death in the underworld. Do not let your fragrant boxwood be cut into wood for the woodworker. Father Enki said, Inanna, Queen of heaven, what has happened? I am troubled. Father Enki took from under his fingernail dirt. He fashioned the dirt into a kugara, a creature neither male nor female. From under his other fingernail, he took out dirt. He fashioned the dirt into a galatur, creature neither male nor female. He said to them, go to the underworld like flies. Erish Kegal lies moaning with the cries of a woman about to give birth. When she cries, oh, oh my inside, cry too, oh, oh your inside. She will be pleased. She will offer you a gift. Ask only for the corpse that hangs from the hook on the wall. Like flies, the Kugar and the Galatur entered the cracks of the gates of the underworld. Erish Kegal sat on her throne. No linen covered her body, her breasts were bare. Her hair swirled around her head like leeks. She was moaning, oh, oh, my inside. They moaned, oh, oh, your inside. She groaned, oh, oh, my outside. Oh, oh, your outside. your heart. She stopped. She looked at them. She said, who are you? Moaning, groaning, sighing like that. I like you. I will give you a gift. We wish only the corpse that hangs from the hook on the wall. Corpse belongs to Anana. Whether it belongs to our king, whether it belongs to our queen, that is what we wish. The corpse was given to them. The Kugara. Sprinkle the food of life on the corpse. The Galatur. Sprinkle the water of life. Anana arose. Inanna was about to ascend for the underworld when the judges of the underworld seized her and said, no one ascends from the underworld unmarked. 
If Inanna would return, she must send someone in her place. Inanna began to ascend when the gala surrounded her. The gala are the demons of the underworld. They know no food, they know no drink, they eat no offerings, they drink no libations, they accept no gifts. They walked in front of her, they walked behind her, they clung to her side. Mean Schuber, dressed in a soiled sackcloth, waited outside the palace gates. When she saw Inanna, surrounded by the gala, she threw herself in the dust at her feet. The gala said, Walk on, Inanna. We will take Neen Schuber in your place. No, not Neen Schuber. She is my constant support. She did not forget my words. Because of her, my life was saved. I will never give Neen Schuber to you. Then walk on, Inanna. We will accompany you to Uma. Uma, at the holy shrine, Shara, the son of Inanna, dressed in a soiled sackcloth, was mourning for his mother. When he saw Inanna, surrounded by the gala, he threw himself in the dust at her feet. The gala said, walk on, Inanna. We will take Shara in your place. No, not Shara. He is my son who cuts my nails and smooths my hair. I will never give Shara to you. Then walk on, Inanna. We will accompany you to Uruk, to the big apple tree. In Uruk, at the big apple tree, Dumuzi, the husband of Inanna, was seated on his magnificent throne dressed in his shining royal garments. When he saw Inanna, surrounded by the gala, he did not move. And the gala seized Dumuzi by the thighs. They broke his reed pipe. And Inanna fastened on Dumuzi the eye of death. She spoke against him the word of wrath. She uttered against him the cry of guilt. Take Dumuzi, take him away. And the gala, who know no food, who know no drink, who eat no offerings, seized Dumuzi. They seized the husband of Anana. They made him stand up, they made him sit down. They gashed him with axes. Dumuzi held up his arms to Utu and cried, oh, Utu. You who are a just God, I am the husband of your sister. I brought cream to your mother's house. I danced on the holy knees. Do not let my gala hold me. Let me escape. And the merciful Utu accepted Dumuzi's tears. Dumuzi escaped. Dumuzi fled. Dumuzi fled to the sheep of his sister, Geshtanana. When Geshtanana found Dumuzi in the sheepfold, she wept. She brought her mouth close to heaven. She brought her mouth close to earth. Her grief covered the horizon like a garment. The gala climbed the reed fence. The first gala struck Dumuzi in the cheek with a piercing nail. The second gala struck him in the other cheek with a shepherd's crook. The third gala smashed the bottom of his churn. The fourth gala threw his drinking cup down from its peg. The fifth gala shattered his churn. The sixth gala shattered his cup. The seventh gala said, rise, Dumuzi, rise from your false sleep. Husband of Anana, brother of Geshtanana, son of Surtur. 
Your ewes are seized, your lambs are seized. Take your crown from your head, your shining robes from your body, your sandals from your feet. Naked you go with us. They seized Dumasie. They bound his hands. They bound his feet. They took him away. The churn lies silent. No milk is poured. The cup lies shattered. Dumasi is no more. The sheepfold has been given to the winds. In the city, a great lament was raised for Dumasi. Dumasi is taken captive in Uruk. He will no longer bathe in Eridu. He will no longer treat the mother of Inanna as his mother. He will no longer raise his sword high. Great is the grief of those who mourn for Dumasi. And Anna wept for Dumasi. Gone is my husband. Gone is my love. The shepherd lives no more. The jackal lies down in his bed. The raven now dwells in his sheepfold. You ask me for his re-pipe. The wind, the wind must play it for him. You ask me for his sweet songs. The wind, the wind must sing. Sertor, the mother of Dumuzi, wandered across the steppe, mourning for her son. The ewe gives up her lamb, the goat gives up her kid. I would go to my child, I would see his face. The mother walked to the desolate place, she walked to where Dumasi lay. She looked into his face. She said, my child, the face is yours. The spirit has fled. There is grief in the house. There is sorrow in the inner chambers. Geshtanana wandered through the streets, calling to her brother, Oh, Dumuzi, who is your sister? I am your sister. Who is your mother? I am your mother. I would find my brother. I would comfort him. I would share his fate in Anna. Seeing the grief of Geshtanana, spoke to her and said, Your brother's house is no more. I would take you to him. But I do not know the place. Then a holy fly appeared and circled the air over Inanna's head. The fly said, If I tell you where Dumasi is, what will you give me? I will let you dwell in the beer houses among the songs of the minstrels. Then lift your eyes to the edges of the steppe. There you will find Dumasi. 
Inanna and Gesht Inanna. Walk to the edges of the step. They found Dumuzi weeping. Inanna took Dumuzi by the hand and said, you will go to the underworld half the year. Your sister, since she has asked, will go the other half. On the day you are called, that day you will be taken. On the day your sister is called, that day you will be set free. Inanna, place Dumuzi in the hands of the Eternal. Holy Erish Kigal, great is your name. Holy Erish Kigal, we sing your praises. I say hail to the Holy One who appears in the heavens. I say hail to the Holy Priestess of Heaven. I say hail to Anana, Great Lady of Heaven, mighty, majestic, and radiant. You shine brilliantly in the evening. You brighten the day at dawn. You stand in the heavens like the sun and the moon. Your wonders are known both above and below to the greatness of the Holy Priestess of Heaven. To you, Inanna, we sing. 